Hi, ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighbor, Tool Bear, back again here in the old den of tools. And today we're here to talk about rigid and ask the question of, is this a dead tool line walking? And the reason I have to, we have to talk about this is, well, for the past two years, people have been asking me, they've been emailing, posting comments, what's going on with rigid? They're not showing up in stores. They're not showing up in the standard advertisements. You'll see everything else, but they'll skip rigid. Is this tool system dead? Well, let's take a look at some of the evidence and see what's what. Now, of course, just a quick recap. Emerson is the company that owns the rigid brand and they do make some rigid tools, but they make them in the rigid red. That's the professional line of tools, mostly for plumbers and electricians. Now you will see the power tool lineup is in that rigid orange. See the orange line underneath it versus the rigid red. So the orange is more of a prosumer value pro line. They've been around for years and years and years. Great tools, excellent tools. I've used to own some, but they're actually made, instead of by rigid, they're made by TTI who owns Milwaukee. They make Ryobi or own, and own Ryobi. They also own Hart. Now AEG, if you didn't know, that, that brand is also a power tool brand. That's... That's basically rigid. So AEG is a tool line sold in Europe and other places, maybe Australia, I don't remember. But uh, as you can see, look at the look at the, the the branding on it, everything about this. This looks like rigid, does it not? And it is. If you took any of these tools and you replaced the AEG on it with rigid, you would have a rigid power tool. Now, so why aren't we seeing this here in the U.S.? Why are we seeing less? Let's, let's, let's talk about how much we are seeing in tools. But first, let's compare contrast versus some of the other brands. If you go to Home Depot, Milwaukee is another. It's a TTI brand. It's sold exclusively with an asterisk there at, at Home Depot, much like Rigid and Ryobi. So how, if, I went to, if I went to Home Depot, how many uh, Milwaukee 18-volt tools could I buy? Well, I have a choice of 650 of them. I can order online with 52 in stock in the store. How about, you know, Black, or not Black & Decker, same thing, DeWalt there. And we're looking at 461 with 54 in store. Makita, 433, 47 in store. Ryobi. One of the largest tool lines out there, they go, they go back and forth with Makita as the claim of who has the most tools. 410 with 58 in store and with rigid you can get 18 tools in store now how many tools do they have overall i think it's like 200 and so 224 but 18 in store or 19 anyway the the selection why is the selection so much lower why can i get so many ryabi tools why can i get so many milwaukee tools but rigid just they're just not there well, now this does not include, of course, the Rigid Octane line, all seven of those tools, that they're a, they are a dead tool walking. They've announced they're ending the, the Octane lineup, so that's not going to be an option. So what's going on? They, the, first we had brush tools, then we had brushless tools, then we had the Octane super high power competing with Milwaukee in many cases for performance, and now they've announced that they're going towards a subcompact lineup. Rigid, unfortunately, has always been one of these brands that didn't quite know what it wanted to be when it grew up. It was stuck between, you know, it's the middle child. You know, a lot of people think, we like to call it the Goldilocks zone, but really it's more of a middle child complex stuck between Milwaukee at the high end and Ryobi at the bottom end. And Ryobi has been raising the floor on what the bottom end is. So where does Rigid go? Well, they are going subcompact. If you want full-size tools, you're already in the Rigid battery lineup. Guess what? Not much of a choice for you because they're going subcompact on all of these tools. Now, if you want to go subcompact, though, there's always already the DeWalt Atomics. They're a new and upcoming line that's just been blowing out the numbers when it comes to performance. And, the, of course, the traditional go-to for subcompact is and has always been Makita. Makita pretty much owns the subcompact market that DeWalt is trying to break into, and now Rigid thinks they're going to play in that pool? Well, you know, <laughs> here's the other, the other contender, which is in the 12-volt. And we've been saying 12-volt has been just owning it, and the Milwaukee, especially the Milwaukee Fuel in the 12-volt line, what an incredible value there. You're getting near 18, 20 volt performance there out of 12, 12 volt sub sub compact size tools at great prices. Look at this. You're getting the, the impact. Was it the hammer drill and the, the impact driver with two batteries, charger and a bag in the fuel lineup, brushless, super high power compact for 180 bucks. 
you know, that's the same price you're going to pay for pretty much a rigid lineup or something like that. And check this out. If you want to go for the basic one, they're still running this deal where you get the two batteries, you get the, the screwdriver, you get the charger in the bag for $69. That's the price of the batteries when they're on sale. So you're basically getting the charger, the, the tool, and the bag for free. There's the M12 line, it's, it's an incredible value, and Rigid thinks they're going to play in it. Now, does Rigid have a 12-volt option? Well, they used to. One of the first videos we did on the channel, please don't watch it. It's a terrible video. <laughs> it was on the rigid 12-volt line. Uh, but today, the, these are your options for rigid battery platform, rigid 12-volt. They're gone. They quietly took them out back and old yellered them. They're, this is a dead tool period, and the octane is soon to follow. So they're going to be subcompact. I don't know exactly how that's going to work. And on top of that, if you look at AEG, they have a 12-volt lineup. <laughs> look at this. We got drywall guns. We got a 12-volt hammer. We've got right-angle attachments, impacts, flashlights, hammer drills, drill drivers, batteries, the whole nine yards. So why are we not seeing this over here? Well, Rigid, as I said, it's Rigid's owned by Emerson. Now, where, where's Emerson's commitment? Well, if you look at their press releases... All they talk about is rigid corporate and rigid red and rigid corporate and rigid red. There is no discussion on rigids, the actual Emerson rigid. There's no discussion of the TTI tools. It's like they don't exist. And who's the who's the opposite though? Who what was the the uh, the yin to rigids yang? Well, it used to be Porter Cable, but Porter Cable is pretty much a dead brand up until they got they, they got a lifeline and had to move to Tractor Supply of all places to be the house brand over there. But we've never we don't see any innovation from them. What is going on with the alleged Goldilocks zone in power tools? Well, you know, Ryobi kind of did a number on them by raising that platform. And then, you know, it pretty much killed Black & Decker. The Black & Decker line, if we've talked about this, 10 tools in the 20-volt line. And not one of them is available in store. These are mail or online order only. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them here. You can get them other places. But you're not going to walk in the store and buy a full line of Black & Decker tools because they're, the, the entry-level tools, the market's just dead. They've been replaced by Craftsman. The Craftsman Brush Tools has taken over the entry level, and the Brushless Tools has taken over that mid-tier prosumer value pro kind of level. Now, as I said, Ryobi, you know, one of the largest tool lines out there, they've raised the bar on what an entry level tool is. It's no longer the super cheap, throwaway, disposable kind of tool. They've got everything up to value pro level tools. And even some that some true professionals use, you see them a lot in the custom automotive market. You see them a lot in the lightweight aircraft market. They're a popular tool. So that leaves the bottom tier for companies like Tech Capo and, and Tech Life. These are the guys who are now squabbling over the entry level tools because the, the big brands don't want to have anything to do with it. Why not enough margin there? It's like the U.S. Autom automotive companies. They've stopped making cars. They're now focused on crossovers, trucks, and SUVs because that's where the margin is. There's no margin in these tools. They have to sell millions and millions of these tools just to break even. It's a hard market for anyone to exist in. So everyone's trying to get their feet in the door and then jump up to that prosumer level, which is where you start to see you know, good profits. And the other thing is we don't see from, from Rigid and never have really seen is outdoor power equipment. This is the largest or say the fastest growing segment in the cordless power tool arena. And they're nowhere to be seen. This is your choice for outdoor power equipment. And trust me, this choice blows. Okay, don't hate the bear. I, I had to do it. I had to do it. But the fact of the matter is Rigid has never addressed this. And it's not like they don't have some tools. We can see in this AEG screenshot, they've got at least a chainsaw, if not more. Why aren't we seeing more? And I think the answer is pretty clear. AEG is owned by TTI. They own that brand. So if they build stuff for that brand, it makes, in the long run, in the long run it builds them value. Milwaukee builds them value. Ryobi builds value for them. Hart builds value for them. Rigid, rigid at the end of the day, is an Emerson product and it does not build value for TTI. It makes them dollars right now, but not value in the long run. 
Now, where is, what about rigid? The other part is, what about rigid stationary tools? They have been a go-to. We've talked about them. We've been fans of them on the channel. They've been a great tool for years and years and years. But even there, Emerson has dumped TTI and is now getting their tools from uh, Delta's parent company. We got new table saws. We got new job site table saws. We got new orbital sanders. We got miter saws. We got planers. All of these being made by Delta's parent company. So where does that leave Rigid? Well, kind of the redheaded stepchild over at TTI. They're not feeling a lot of love. Emerson has taken away some of their business. They don't own the brand. Why would you invest in it? That's the real question. Now we've been, you know, I, this is from my shop from years and years ago. As you can see, we got a rigid sander over there. We got a rigid impact. There's other rigid tools around the shop. If you've been with the channel, you've seen them. But, and one of the reasons to go with it, one of the reasons I chose, like many people, was the rigid lifetime warranty. But it's not a lifetime warranty. It's a lifetime service agreement. And the reason for that is because they're not then bound by many state laws regarding warranties. And we've seen evidence over the years of rigid constantly trying to cheapen the value, not, not live up to their word, just find any kind of loophole that they can get out of servicing this equipment and then end up charging the user for the for the uh, the fix on that tool. And as such, many people are jumping ship and they're going to companies like Skill. Of course, companies like Ryobi. They're going to companies like Craftsman. For people who are looking more for that super high-end prosumer value pro market, we're seeing them jump over to Cobalt as well as Metabo HPT, who we've talked about for years. One of the most underrated companies out there. They've got a lifetime warranty. Now, their life, this is a warranty, no service agreement, but their warranty is the lifetime of the tool. As long as they make that tool, they will service that tool. And they, you know, these tools have a pretty good lifetime on it. They, uh, they stick around. They don't seem to be changing them every five minutes like some other power tool companies do. So where does that leave us when it comes to, you know, the, the whole thing with Rigid? Well, you've got a brand that is, that the parent company doesn't seem to care about. The company that makes it doesn't see long-term value in it. And we keep seeing a smaller and smaller collection of tools. They don't get an outdoor power equipment. They've given up completely on 12 volt. They've given up on high power and they're going for a niche that is frankly kind of owned by some other companies. So if you're not going to go whole hog, you're not even going to get a pork chop out of it. I think this is a dead brand walking. It's, I think their, their years are numbered. Now, will that ever truly go away entirely? I don't know because of course Home Depot is invested in it as their mid-tier brand. Uh, you know, TTI does make money off of it because people still do buy it. But at the end of the day, if you buy into rigid, you're buying into a dead end street. That's just the way it looks from here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know a lot of you are rigid fan bears. I used to be myself until I woke up and smelled the coffee. Uh, what do you think? I mean, do you see any future in rigid? They're going subcompact. You're not going to get full size tools. I still like the stationary tools because I like the stuff Delta was making. So I have no problem with Delta making it now. But if we're talking mostly here about the out, not the outdoor, but about the cordless tools, now, definitely, I guess we should talk about the outdoor power equipment because you're not going to get an option when it comes to that. You're not going to get 12 volt options. You're going to get subcompact only. And for me, I think this is a bad call for rigid. I'm sorry. That's just the way I see it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the bear down in the comments. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, over at Instagram, all the usual places. And you know what you got to do now. Yep, it's time to chomp the old like button. <laughs> yeah, chomp the old like button. Smash that subscribe. Ring the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.